I have many, many dreams and many goals to achieve. Plans are made too. I'm ready, I believe. But I'm waiting for the stars to align for that perfect time. Because if I get started now, it would be a crime. In January, I was to start, but you know how things were this year. I won't be able to devote much time is what I really fear. But next year, nothing will stand in my way. Because 1st of Jan is a brand new year and a brand new day. Do you think like this and put things off and away? Do you procrastinate and wait for that perfect day? Don't leave it off to later what you can do today. Procrastination can be lethal, a heavy price to pay. I wrote that poem in frustration. You see, I always had a lot of things to do, dreams, goals, plans, all in place. But I just couldn't get started. For a long time, I thought I had starting trouble. But the reality was, and I discovered that later, that procrastination had become a habit and that affected my self-esteem. And I know I'm not alone. Procrastination seems to be a human problem, a universal problem. We have issues on getting started on something that we think is very important to us, things that we dream about. Why then do we procrastinate? To my understanding, and of course, so many journals that I've been reading, psychological, we tend to procrastinate only to avoid something. It could be boredom, anxiety or fear or a combination of all these unpleasant emotions. Or sometimes it is only because we are addicted to something else. Procrastination is a coping mechanism that shields us from all these strong emotions. If we ignore these tasks at this moment and put it off to later, our mood improves instantly. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem, of course, is when this happens day after day, year after year, and eventually procrastination becomes a habit and it has long-term implications. We could lose out on opportunities, damage our reputation. We may harm relationships and the worst is damaging our self-esteem. Procrastination makes us our worst enemy. Digging deeper into why we do what we do, I realize that often we lack awareness at a deeper level. This is where self-awareness and self-control can really help us. So here's what you can do to overcome the feelings that make you procrastinate. Notice the resistance. What are you avoiding? Why are you avoiding it? If the task is filling you up with anxiety, look for a root cause. Oftentimes, it points out to poor time management or unrealistic expectations. Sometimes, it can also be a casual behavior. You could be procrastinating on tasks that do not have deadline, or the deadline is long way off and you think you have plenty of time. Another reason could be perfectionism and this comes forward during many of my coaching conversations. I'm a perfectionist, I need to do this job perfectly. One other reason could be distractions. This is when you want to do things desperately and there is a distraction that has a greater pull of your attention. Being aware of the resistance will help you move ahead in the right direction. Once that's done, next be aware of the outcomes. What's at stake here? What will happen if you continue to delay and avoid? Is it truly worth it? Looking ahead at what this procrastination can cause you in terms of damage can help you get started. So make a list of all the tasks that you're avoiding right now and what is really at stake. If money is your motivation, then put a monetary value to it. How much money is it going to cost you if you don't do this task? This is a powerful exercise. Now that you know why you're avoiding it, how can you overcome them? You create a plan of action. So if your root cause is time management or unrealistic expectation, then you rework on your goals. If it is distractions, then you create a strategy to disconnect. If it is boredom and you don't enjoy doing this task, you delegate this to somebody else. You get the drift right. You plan an action based on what is making you procrastinate. Then you create a reward for that action. Incentives are super powerful to harness our motivation. So use them. It can be as simple as an hour extra on social media or watching Netflix or even taking that extra bowl of ice cream, whatever works for you. So far, we were able to notice our resistance, be aware of our outcomes, we planned an action and we also planned a reward. Now, how do you keep consistently working on it? That is where you practice mindfulness. Being mindful will ensure that you follow all the four steps consistently. When you're mindful, you will recognize the resistance. When distractions arise, it's mindfulness that reminds you of the cost the plans that you have made and the rewards that are waiting for you. To know more about mindfulness and how you can be mindful, I'm giving a link to the playlist on mindfulness uh, somewhere on the screen and also in the description below. Remember, true change can happen only with non-judgmental approach and self-compassion. In words of Brené Brown, 
self compassion is key because when we are able to be gentle with ourselves in the midst of shame we are more likely to reach out connect and experience empathy that's it from me what is your takeaway from this video do let me know in the comment section below or you may reach out to me in any of the social media platforms that i'm in thank you so much for watching if you like this video do hit a like button and share it with your friends and i'll see you next week until then take good care of yourself